Hello, this is Video Free America 1 Presents. September of 1955, a weary Rosa Parks, a seamstress active in the NAACP, decided she'd this is rather video go free to American jail one watching a tribute to Martin Luther King Jr., the, the finest men that ever walked here, staging a boycott of the city buses. And I've always said, had you planned it, it wouldn't work. It was spontaneous. It was like spontaneous combustion. It's going to be a short little video here of some of the program. The Nothing important. Baxter Avenue Baptist Church, Martin Luther King Jr. He was just 26. Just in remembrance of his, of his uh, birthday. And his legacy that he left for us. Freedom. Equality. Something we're losing right now because of our present regime. leadership. That's college. Stuff. And the worst part is, you voted him in. We need you, sir. He has said that he was reluctant, but not for long. Because as long as you sit in the back, you have a false sense of inferiority. And so long as you let the white man sit in the front and push you back there, he has a false sense of superiority. He accepted this cause because of his own religious belief, his own depth. He made a central judgment. We need to start doing boycotting too right now. Work for them, but I don't want to work for us. And then on January 30th, his house was bombed. His wife Coretta and nine week old daughter were inside. And he rushed home not knowing whether or not. I had been injured, or the baby had been injured. Well, my father said to me, well, Coretta, I came to get you and the baby. And then I said to him, well, Dad, I can't go. I want to stay here with Mike because I, I feel this is where I should be. But He said, now we just have to keep praying for strength, the strength to keep going in spite of what they're trying to do to stop us. That was his preachment all the time. We can't stop. Despite the dangers he faced, King held fast to the boycott and his nonviolent philosophy, a revolutionary strategy that stunned even his followers. It was the place of murder, it was the place of mayhem. You're going to be nonviolent in the face of all of this mayhem. That would be a miracle I would love to witness. And uh, I witnessed it. King's tactics paid off more than a year after the boycott began. The Supreme Court outlawed segregation of public buses. The boycott was over, and a new movement had begun. And the Negro citizens of Montgomery are urged to return to the buses tomorrow night on a non-segregated day. That was a great day. I remember him saying that was a great day. The victory thrust King onto the national stage. He was on the cover of Time Magazine, one of the first black men in American history. Sparks from the victory in Montgomery now ignited hope across black America. People started calling him from all over the country saying, come and help us, we have the same situation here. The heart of a thriving black middle class Beginnings. Atlanta neighborhood Beginnings of Martin Luther King Jr. was pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church. In the way. Did he seem in your crowd to have some special quality at a young age, or did that come later? You knew, as the old folk would say, that boy's going someplace. He's going somewhere. He's going to be something. In an era when most Southern black men got less than a sixth grade education, King went to Morehouse College. And he entered Morehouse College at age 15. He was all interested in books, and we would go to parties, and he'd still be reading, like looking at the Bible or something, and now, you're not going? By his senior year, King was an ordained minister. After graduating, he went north to seminary school. 
he started reading and studying Gandhi, and that was what led him eventually into the practice of non -violence. I probably had an average education in the fifth grade and more. They said, amen. And this Schopenhauer would say, he said, amen. He was teaching in a way that people didn't even know that they were being rights. But increasingly, Dr. King found it hard to balance his job as a pastor with his civil rights work. So when his father asked him to come co-pastor his Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Dr. King seized the opportunity to return home and devote more time to the movement. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. In 1960, the future was at hand. Thank you, Jesus. In February, Black college students in Nashville and other southern cities launched a full frontal assault on legal segregation by staging sit-ins at whites-only lunch counters. I'm sorry, our management does not allow us to serve Negroes in here. In spite of all of this, I had to keep loving the people who denied me service. And you know what the worst part is? The people have enslaved themselves again, or this time they have a black slave master instead of a white one. His name is Obama. When police did get your rights taken away, it's happening now. Sorry. I think the sit-in served to dramatize the indignities and the injustices which Negro people are facing all over the nation. Without seeking the role, King was becoming the movement's moral leader. He was just a, sort of the spiritual leader of everything. Gene Roberts was a young journalist the night Martin Luther King came to North Carolina to raise money for the cause. All over the audience, you could see women who were clearly washerwomen and laundresses reaching into their pocketbook, pulling out their handkerchiefs with knots in them. I'm not in the handkerchiefs to contribute to the Civil War. Hello, this is Video Free American One, and I'm saying thanks for watching and God bless.